Good evening. My name is Jerry Buckley, and I'm the Director of School Counseling here at Bishop Kenny. We appreciate everyone from the class of 2022 for tuning in to watch our Planning for College program tonight. Our presenters tonight will be myself, Mrs. Amanda Santorino, our school counselor for students' last names A through D, and Ms. Jackie Harden, our counselor for students' last names R through Z. As part of the email we sent you today, we provided two sets of handouts, one which our speakers will be referring to directly, and another which has complimentary information. As we begin our program, we always like to point out the most important factors that colleges look at during the college admissions process. According to the latest information from NACAC, which is the National Association for College Admission Counseling, schools will typically focus on grades in college prep courses, followed by grades in all courses, the overall strength of curriculum, and then admissions test scores on the ACT and SAT, and then followed by essays, demonstrated interest in the school by the student, counselor and teacher recommendations, and so forth. So these are many of the things we'll be talking about specifically tonight in our program. These are the factors we try to emphasize with our students and families from the beginning of ninth grade forward, and they're always good to review at the beginning of the junior year. At this time, I will turn it over to Mrs. Santorino, who will discuss starting your college search. Good evening and welcome, class of 2022 students and parents. Junior year of high school is the perfect time we encourage students to begin researching potential colleges and universities. We suggest that they first create a college file that lists features that fit their interests and needs while also understanding what attracts them to a particular school. As we begin, you will see that this is a very comprehensive packet offering a wealth of really great information that can assist you in starting that college file. On handout number one and number two, entitled Favorite College-Related Websites, here you can find a plethora of websites from SAT and ACT testing info, career options, financial aid and scholarships, to both private and public college web addresses in Florida. So as you start your search, we encourage you to sit down together as a family and discuss possible academics, majors, location, and money, which are all the key factors that we will go into detail tonight. As your child aims for college, keep in mind that there are certain characteristics to consider when looking into various schools. By helping your child distinguish what they like and dislike about a university will help them determine which ones will be the best fit institution. Starting their college search now and ranking their preferences in order of importance will assist them to make the most suitable decision later on. The first key factor to consider are the types of academic programs the university your child is researching offers. You want them to ask themselves, does the school have a wide variety of majors to choose from? What are the most common majors students take at that school? Does the college have a discipline that your child is interested in studying? Are students able to double major or have a major and a minor? Are students required to identify a major when they apply? Does the school offer flexibility to change a major if no longer attracted to that field? Next, students should explore if they are interested in learning new languages, gaining a greater understanding of a new culture, all the while taking courses within their chosen major in a different country. Well, this is a great opportunity for them to explore if the school offers a study abroad or exchange program. From there, they can research which countries are available to choose from to study abroad from and identify what the requirements are to take the classes through these programs. Your child will want to know what semester in college they can begin these exchange programs as well as the standard length of time they could be away. 
In addition, it's important to research if the university offers internships and cooperative education programs within their chosen field. This is so that way they can enrich their college experience. This is also where they combine classroom-based education with practical work experience. Cooperative education programs, also known as co-ops, can provide academic credit in which the student can apply what they learned in preparation for the real world. Keep in mind, it's important to be aware that some internships will be paid while others are unpaid. For the next key factor, there are several questions you'll want to discuss with your child when considering the location, size, and setting of a university. First, make sure that they know the distance away from home and if they will be able to feel comfortable in this new area. You want your child to ask themselves if they would want to live in that location and go to school there for the next four years. Do you have any relatives that are close by? Is your child able to drive home on weekends or will they need to take a flight? So will that limit the amount of time that they can come home? In addition, what type of climate does your child prefer? It's important to be aware of weather and temperatures of that location, especially if they are not used to the extreme cold in some northern states. Next would be to identify the size of the school. How large or small is the student enrollment? Is the school in a big city or in a more secluded setting? Think about what type of campus population your child is looking for. Do they want an urban or rural area? Next would be to find out the typical class size. Will your child be in courses in large lecture halls that could hold over 100 students, or will they be in a much smaller class size, similar to BK, where they can have more personal attention? Research what the faculty to student ratio is and know your child's preferred interaction style. Is your child going to be taught by a teaching assistant or will they have an actual professor? If your child needs to go to office hours for extra assistance, who exactly will they be meeting with? Knowing the size and setting of an institution is a characteristic your child surely wants to consider because it's very important that they feel comfortable and are able to establish a rapport with their classmates and their instructors. What many college alumni shared that made their college experience enjoyable was their social life and how they got involved around campus. This is how many freshman college students make new friends. So have your child think about their abilities, talents, and what captivates them. What are some things that they want to do while in college? There are so many different activities to get involved with, such as different clubs and organizations. Ask your child to reflect on the groups they are involved with here at BK and what they want to continue doing in college. If interested, discover what athletic teams and intramural sports the school offers so that way they can play on them. Look into how they can volunteer and participate within the community. Research the local events that go on and what they want to be a part of. Students should check out what types of culture events are available at the universities that they are researching. They should search how they can continue practicing their faith by seeing if that institution offers religious services. Is your child interested in Greek life where they rush a sorority or a fraternity? This is a great way your child can meet new people, become part of a brother or sisterhood, and have an extended family away from home. Next, you want to find out what your options are regarding housing. Each university will have different requirements, such as if you need to live on campus your freshman year of college. Some schools will make it mandatory, while other institutions, it may be on a first come, first serve availability basis. Keep in mind that some on-campus housing has dorm rooms where your child may have to share a bedroom or bathroom with another student, 
while other residential areas have apartment style suites. It's important to have this discussion with your child so they are aware they could possibly share a space with someone else. By seeing the campus in person will help them observe these qualities to make important decisions on their personal preferences. Finally, we recommend for your child to talk with BK graduates and current college students so they can hear feedback about the campus life. These students will give genuine advice based on their own experiences. Please refer to handout number three, which is a glossary of commonly used financial aid terms that you will frequently hear as you begin the college planning process. Usually, parents' number one concern when it comes to college admissions is the total cost of attendance because, yes, money does matter. Please know that assistance is available through financial aid opportunities as well as scholarships. First, there are need-based aid, which is based on the income levels or need of the individual family. Families that are eligible for aid can receive assistance through either federal, state, or at the institutional level. The FAFSA is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. This is a service offered through the government. The FAFSA opens up October 1st of your child's senior year. Next year, when you complete the FAFSA, you will use the 2020 tax information as it is required to use the prior, prior year. Many colleges will ask students to fill out the FAFSA and use this information to determine possible aid from their institution. Then there are merit-based scholarships that look at academic achievement. This is like the Bright Future Scholarship where they look at specific academic criteria, such as grade point average, test scores, and volunteer service hours. We will look greater into detail on this scholarship later on. There are many ways to search for financial aid and scholarships to find the best match. Students can use their Naviance portal that is updated on a regular basis with national scholarships from various companies and organizations. In addition, they can refer to the running list of our favorite financial aid and scholarship websites, as well as on their Schoology class group for more local scholarships. Our Office of School Counseling is set up to assist students and families as they begin to navigate through the entire college admissions process. We will start meeting with our juniors in mid-November for their college readiness appointment. We encourage for your child to start researching potential schools and come ready with questions for us to answer. Navion Student is a great tool students can use to search for schools as well. This platform has a comprehensive online college and career planning resource for students that provides information on majors, universities, scholarships, occupations, and much, much more. Colleges and universities spend a lot of money to produce materials designed to answer admissions questions, so we recommend that your child peruse through the websites of each of these schools to know exactly what they have to offer and how they each differ. We also suggest for your child to speak with friends that are in college, older siblings that have already went through the process, parents, friends that may have gone to a particular university they are interested in. These are all human resources that will give valuable and pertinent information to help them create their college list. There are so many resources we hope that your child takes advantage of to gain more insight on a university and what each school has to offer. They should connect with a college admissions representative for in and out of state universities by attending the virtual college fairs coming up. Students must check out the website listed to sign up in advance for an online session. College representatives have already started visiting Bishop Kenny through virtual Zoom conferences. Students can also register through their Naviance portal to see and speak to live to learn more about a university. They should ask any questions they may have regarding the university or admissions process directly to the rep. 
We encourage students to take virtual tours of the college campus by signing up on the university's websites, as well as visiting that college directly when that time becomes available. Some colleges at this time may have restrictions on campus visits, but it is important to eventually see the school in person to determine if it is a good fit prior to committing to that school at the end of their senior year. Looking at handout number four, the College Comparison Worksheet, we recommend students complete this as they check out the schools. By using this template, it will help keep track of universities on what your child likes and what they dislike to determine if that could be potentially a good match for them. This will help them go back and review key details and rank their preference. Finally, we are confident that students that graduate from Bishop Kenny are equipped with the necessary tools to attend a college. Our curriculum has prepared them for the rigor and high expectations of that university. We want to help your child recognize their potential by working towards building their confidence that college is attainable and realistic for their future. There truly is a university out there for everyone. By looking at handout page number five, considering out of state, these are some questions your child will want to consider if they want to go out of state, whether that's to a public or a private college or university. Knowing all of their options when it comes to the different types of institutions will help them make the most sound decision for them. In addition, Requirements will vary by college, so it's important your child thoroughly understands what type of GPA, test scores, course load they will need to be admissible for each of the various universities. Whether your child is interested in a community junior college like FSCJ, TCC, or Santa Fe, or they prefer a more traditional four-year university like University of Florida, Florida State University, or even UCF, they should really consider all of the key factors that play a role in finding what works best for them. There are many academic opportunities within each of the institutions as well as honor programs that students should investigate if that is the pathway they would like to take. Our next presenter will be Ms. Jackie Harden, and she will discuss standardized testing. Hello, I'm Jackie Harden. I am the school counselor for R through Z, and today we are going to be talking about standardized testing. Last week, counselors discussed with juniors the importance of the PSAT and this test being a National Merit Scholars qualifying test. This test will take place on October 14th in their FlexBond. Students will take the evidence-based reading and writing and math sections. There is no essay portion for this test. The PSAT is a little different with scoring than the SAT. Each section will be worth 760 points instead of the 800 points that is typical of the SAT. The total points possible for the PSAT is 1,520 points. On pages 6 and 7 of your handouts, you will see the PSAT score report. This report should be available to view mid-December. Counselors will discuss the report with students in their classrooms in January. The report will show the breakdown of scores and the percentile to show college readiness. Students can prepare for this test by using the practice test that was handed out to them in class, the online practice test that's available at College Board, and spending time reviewing uh, their Khan Academy accounts. The SAT is broken into two sections, the evidence-based reading and writing section and the math section. Each of these points each of these sections is worth 800 points. The overall SAT score is the two sections added together. Page 11 of your handouts is an example of the SAT score report. 
It will break down the different areas so students can see where they excel and what they need to work on. There is an optional essay with the extra cost at registration. Colleges and universities may require an essay score. I would suggest that students look at the schools they are interested in to see if this is a requirement. There is no penalty for a wrong answer. Students will just not earn the points for the question. It is in the student's best interest to answer all of the test questions. To register, students need to create a College Board account at collegeboard.org. Page 15 in the handouts will show testing dates for this year. The ACT is broken into four sections, English, Math, Reading, and Science Reasoning. The highest score for each section is 36. The composite score a student will receive is the average score between the four sections. Page 13 and 14 of the handouts is an example of the ACT score report. Again, it shows the breakdown of where the student excelled and what they need to work it on. In addition to this, if a student filled out the college and career planning questions on their ACT student account, it will show a detailed report using the data provided and the scores. There is an optional essay that the students can opt to take as well. There is an extra co cost when registering, and again, I would suggest students look at the colleges and universities to, that they are interested in to see if the essay portion is a requirement. Like the SAT, there is no point penalty for a wrong answer. Students will not earn points for an answer that is wrong. To register, students will need to create an ACT student account at actstudent.org. Page 15 in your handouts again shows the testing dates for this year. SAT subject tests are college entrance exams for specific subjects. It is an opportunity for students to show their strengths and their knowledge. There are 20 subjects to choose from and each test is about an hour long. There are five general subject areas, including English, Math, Science, History, and Language. Check with the admissions office of the colleges and universities the students are interested in to see if the SAT subject test are required or are strongly encouraged. There are many schools that do not require this. However, selective schools may require it. Page 12 of your handouts will show a score report of the subject test. To register for the ACT, SAT, and SAT subject test, students must log into their ACT student or College Board accounts at these specific websites. There are specific dates for the test and they are listed on page 15 of your handouts. I would check the website frequently for the list of dates that may be added or canceled. Students should prepare for the SAT and ACT. There are numerous materials they can use. In the Office of School Counseling, there are booklets for both SAT and ACT available with a practice test. They can use their student accounts uh, for the SAT and ACT websites, and they can subscribe to questions of the day or online test prep guides through these websites. You can find books and software on Amazon, bookstores, or in their local libraries. Students can also use Khan Academy for SAT prep and ACT uh, Academy for ACT prep. These are free for students to use and they can upload their scores so that they can have a more specific approach to preparing for the test. There are many types of test preparation courses. Students have online, one-on-one, -on -one, and class options. When looking for test prep options, look for respected names and programs. There should be SAT and ACT preparation training involved with these programs or tutors. 
A course should take about 10 to 15 hours. And remember, if a person or a program is promising drastic changes to scores and it may sound a little too good to be true, it probably is. Every student should test whether they are planning to go to a traditional four-year university or to a two-year state college. Students will have to earn minimum test scores to show that they are college ready. Students who have achieved these scores or higher can enter directly into college coursework. Students who do not meet these test scores will typically have to enroll in remedial coursework before they are able to go directly into a college level class. For SAT, students will need to have a 460 or higher for both evidence-based reading and writing and math sections. For the ACT, students will need to have a 19 or higher on the reading and math sections and an 18 or higher on the English section. Lately, we have been hearing about schools going test score optional or test flexible. This is a step that schools are taking to de-emphasize test scores while placing more emphasis on students' grades and strength of schedule. Check with the colleges and universities that the students are interested in to see if they are offering this. Also, check to see what scores are required for admissions at these schools. Students may be in the range for admissions purposes. In addition to this, schools may offer scholarships that have a SAT and ACT score attached to it. So it is worth seeing if there is money involved, whether or not the student needs to test. The Florida Bright Futures Scholarship Program is offered to Florida high school graduates that matriculate to a co Florida college or university. This is for both public and private universities. Page 16 of the handouts has a detailed breakdown of scholarships. There are two scholarship awards based off of merit. To earn the Florida Academic Scholars Award or the 100% tuition scholarship, students will need to have a recalculated 3.5 GPA using their academic core classes, score a 1330 on the SAT or a 29 on the ACT, and complete 100 hours of community service by June of their senior year. To earn the Med Florida Medallion Scholars Award or the 75% tuition scholarship, students will need to have a recalculated GPA of a 3.0 using the academic core classes, score a 1210 on the SAT or a 25 on the ACT, and complete at least 75 hours of community service by June of their senior year. The award amount will differ from school to school depending on their tuition. At private colleges, the amount may not cover all of the tuition cost as the amount awarded will be based off of the public institution cost. Now I will turn it over to Mr. Buckley to continue the presentation on the junior timeline. Now we've heard from Mrs. Centorino and Ms. Harden regarding the search process as well as standardized testing. We're going to talk a little bit about the timeline for juniors you should be following as well as some ideas about the senior year and what the actual application process will take a look like. Uh, if we can take a look at handouts number 17 and 18, we're going to refer to our junior year timeline. This is something obviously you can take a look at um, and kind of map out like I said, a potential timeline for the junior year. There are a couple things I'd like to point out. Number one, in September, we actually already had our virtual 
uh, Bishop Kenny Scholarship and Financial Aid Program, which was hosted by Mr. Bill Spires from TCC. He did an excellent job. Uh, that is actually saved on the Bishop Kenny website. So if you'd like to go back and review that, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it yet, but it gives some great suggestions about applying for financial aid and scholarships eventually when you are a senior in high school. Um, as we talked about also earlier this evening, the PSAT will be taking place on Wednesday, October 14th. So that's an important date for all juniors in getting ready for the actual SAT, as well as possibly entering the National Merit Program as a junior as well. Um, there are a couple, a number of different things also to take a look at all the way through the second semester, including AP exams in May. So again, we would encourage you to follow that timeline and be aware of the different things that are key during that school year. Um, as far as applying to college, our general rule of thumb is that we would encourage students to have a minimum of three schools that they apply to. One might be uh, a safe uh, bet, meaning that they very well meet or possibly exceed what the admissions criteria is as far as the test scores and also the grades that are, are required. Um, a good fit, meaning that Again, they probably meet the criteria well. It looks like it's a good fit as far as their admissions capabilities. And then possibly a stretch school, which would be maybe something that um, is a little bit beyond their potential reach, or maybe they don't exe meet exactly what they're looking for, but it's something they definitely want to shoot for. And we, we tell all students there are a lot of schools that are stretch schools for all students, whether they're number one in the class or whatever the case is, just meaning they're very competitive, whether that be an Ivy League school, um, a school like a Duke or a Notre Dame or whatever the case is. But we want to make sure that you at least have one in each category. You certainly could have more than that, but you never want to have all in one category. We like to disperse that as best you can. As far as admissions policies, uh, I would ask you to take a look at handout number 19, uh, page number 19, where it talks about the different uh, terminology regarding uh, the admissions policies for different schools. Early action, as you can see listed there, is basically it's a non-binding agreement, but it's something where the students will enter into with the school as far as they apply a little bit earlier than the usual student and may find out a little earlier as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Early decision is probably the one to be most aware of um, as far as being a binding contract. Early decision means that you are applying to this school and if they accept you, you will definitely attend. So again, you'll sign something that says that you are planning on doing that if accepted. Um, Many schools have an early decision. None of the state universities in Florida currently have that, but there are some highly selective schools that do have the early decision process. So I would encourage you to take a look at page 19 and review that. Um, again, that's something you want to have a conversation with your counselor about when the time comes for that and don't understand the ins and outs. There are some schools where it's actually easier to get in using the early decision policy, and some schools it's actually a little more difficult. So you want to be familiar with each school that you're you're looking at and also understand that you can only apply early decision to one college so it's important to know if that's something that you're looking at to understand all the ins and outs of the process and that's something that your school counselor can help you with when the time comes regular decision is just as it sounds typically there's a due date for the application and usually about six to eight weeks and sometimes later than that they'll give you an answer on that um, on a specific date as well. Currently, University of Florida and Florida State, State, for example, have a regular decision date where if you get the information in by their certain date, either November or December 1st, then they will follow through with the decision typically in late January, early February. And then finally, rolling admission is a general policy, again, where if you apply, whenever you apply, typically six to eight weeks later, you'll get a response. For example, UCF is a school like that. But with that being said, you want to make sure that, again, the earlier you apply, the better. You do not want to wait till second semester of your senior year to start applying to colleges because, like anything else, their spots get taken up. And it's important to make sure you're early in the process uh, because if they want to see, let's say, first semester grades or more standardized testing they are going to require of you. You want to make sure you're aware of that and you get some feedback as early as possible. As far as the application packet, understand uh, you would be looked at as a student holistically, which means that they're going to look at the whole student beyond just the standardized test scores and the grades that you've received in high school. So there's a number of different things that will go into that. Uh, number one will be potentially your college essay. If you look at handout 
uh, pages 20 and 21. We provided you with top 10 tips for writing the college essay. This can be a key component of your application where you can really bring out things about yourself that they can't just get from your transcript and your um, standardized testing. So that's definitely something you want to do a great job with and understand all the ins and outs that they're looking for. Many juniors will actually write the body of their essay as a junior uh, before their senior year to get a good head start in that. So we would encourage you to take advantage of that process as much as possible. That is followed by the resume of activities. Uh, pages number 22 and 23 are sample resume activities. Again, this is where you can demonstrate to the college how you've made Bishop Kenny a better place and how you're going to make their college a better place if they accept you and you enroll. So you want to show all the different things you've been involved in outside of the classroom, like I said before, that they cannot just get off of your transcript and your standardized testing. Handouts 24 and 25, as well as 26 and 27, which are teacher recommendation request form and also counselor recommendation request forms, are key things to be aware of as well. So eventually, when your student requests a recommendation, they'll actually do it through the Navians program, which we'll be talking about a little bit later on today. Uh, but this is something that they'll also be required to fill out and hand to either their teacher and or their counselor if they're requiring a letter of recommendation. So this is something to be familiar with again, and, and again, something we'll review with them as they get ready for their senior year and the actual application process. If you take a look at handout number 28, page 28, you'll see a sample official transcript from Bishop Kenny. So this would be something that gets sent to the college as needed as far as when they are look, going through the application process and they're looking at your grades. Uh, you can see all the classes that you've taken in high school listed there as well as the final averages and then also the current schedule of the senior year. Now there is something now that's become more popular that's called the self reported academic record. And this is where the students will actually enter in their own grades into the college portal when they are applying. Uh, now, eventually they will be verified with an official transcript from Bishop Kenny, but there are many schools, especially the larger state universities that are going with that, what they call a SAR report, that self-reported academic record. But again, still this is the information they would be entering the students. So they'll get a copy of that in the beginning of their senior year that'll help them enter that in when the time comes. As far as standardized test scores, those are things that need to be sent directly from either the College Board with the SAT or the ACT with the actual SAT, ACT scores. So when you're signing up, you have an opportunity to send four free ones. Uh, when you sign up to take the test, we would strongly encourage that because it saves money when the time comes. After that, I believe it's $9 that you, for each school you'll have to send it out. So if you're applying to multiple schools, that could become costly pretty quickly. So we would encourage you to take advantage of the free ones when you can as a junior and eventually when you are a senior, um, again, when you're taking those tests. As far as a timeline for seniors, pages 29 and 30 give you some ideas. Now this is the timeline for this school year, obviously for our current senior class, but we would encourage you to become familiar with it because many of the things are obviously the same from year to year. A uh, couple of different things to be aware of for the NCAA Clearinghouse, so if you are going to be uh, considering and possibly getting recruited for Division I or Division II NCAA athletics, whether that's as a scholarship athlete or a walk-on. You'll want to complete that in the summer before your senior year. Go, go ahead and complete that registration. We will send a copy of your uh, first three years transcript and we'll send a final one when you graduate from high school and it helps you go through the process as far as being cleared. So we would encourage you to do that, like I said, the summer before your senior year. If you are interested in any type of military academy, so whether that be Air Force, West Point, Naval Academy, and so forth, uh, you'll want to make sure that you're on top of that. Really, as a junior, many times the middle of October is the deadline for seniors when they're applying to the military academy, so that's something you want to, want to be aware of now and also know that that'll be um, available and required to be done early in the senior year also.
As far as the Bishop Kenny application procedure, as you can see, we really put an onus on applying early, which means probably by December 1st at latest, you want to have the majority of your applications in. Um, there are housing limit, limits, especially at state universities. So if you are looking at the larger state schools, especially in Florida, University of Florida, Florida State, and so forth, uh, they do have limited housing. So it's important to make sure you apply to those schools and potentially even get your housing applications in before before you even know if you're accepted, just so you can re reserve that spot when the time comes. And again, like he says, we always encourage you to have everything wrapped up before Christmas vacation, so you know it's all mailed, it's all been mailed and or submitted online, and you are ready for your um, different answers that you're going to get during the second semester. So that's a key thing to be aware of as well. Um, the next few handouts, pages 31 through 33, are the state universities in Florida. Uh, and then handout number 34 and 35 are for the private colleges and universities in Florida. But we feel like these are great resources for you to be aware of. It lists all 12 four-year public institutions in the state, FAMU, FAU, all the way down to University of West Florida. And you can take a look at all the different requirements that those different schools have. So you have your admissions procedures and their deadlines, what the typical profile of their incoming freshman class would be as far as GPA, test score requirements, and so forth. You'll see the fall and summer admission requirements. So uh, typically, it's a little bit easier to get in for the summer when you apply to some of these larger schools. Uh, so that's something to definitely be aware of. Uh, we really try to promote the summer admission for a lot of different reasons. First of all, number one, like I said, is that it's a little bit easier to get in typically. Number two, you're usually going to be on campus with less than half the total number of students. So let's say University of Florida, they have 40,000 undergraduates. There probably will be approximately 20,000 people on campus. So you can get acclimated to the campus a lot quicker. And then number three, you'll probably take possibly up to three classes total over the summer uh, and possibly one or two as well. And at that point, you're getting your GPA off to a good start and really getting a good foundation underneath you to when you go back in late August and start the fall of your freshman year. So we would strongly encourage you to consider summer admissions, not for everybody, for different reasons, but we would encourage you to look at it and understand what the ins and outs of applying at that point are. There's also information on honors programs. We would strongly encourage you to research those as well. A lot of great things about honors programs, including sometimes it's specialized housing. Housing. Sometimes you can register for courses early, earlier than the typical student body. So we would encourage you to be aware of that and take advantage of those opportunities if they provide themselves also and you qualify for what they're looking for as far as GPA and test score when the time comes. Navian Student is a great program uh, that we've been involved with now for close to 10 years. Uh, it's an internet program that all students are trained in in their freshman year. They can go through and take surveys related to potential college careers and majors. They can also research colleges on there. And then when they are seniors, this is how they'll actually request that their transcript gets sent to specific colleges through our Navians program. So uh, students have access to this in a variety of ways, including the links on the Class of 22 uh, page on the Bishop Kenny website, so we would strongly encourage them to take a look at that. There are also what we call scattergrams on there, and you can see over the last five years, students who have applied from Bishop Kenny to specific schools and what their outcomes have been as far as it, uh, they've been admitted, waitlisted, not admitted, whatever the case is, and you can see their overall average GPA as well as their test score. So you can really take a look right now as a junior knowing what your potential GPA GPA is and your current test scores and kind of project your admissibility at different schools. So we would strongly encourage our students as we do every year in their, their guidance appointment to make sure that they're looking at that and becoming aware of what the different requirements are and the success rate that our students have had at those particular colleges when the time comes. The common application is definitely something I'd like to make sure everyone is aware of. Um, it is a resource, as it says there, over 500 different colleges and universities are now currently available on the Common App. It's a great way to streamline the application project uh, process. As you can see, state universities, including University of Florida, Florida State, UCF, and UNF are all part of the Common Application. Um, and again, they can link that actually with their Navians um, 
their Navian's uh, program and their Navian's registration, and they can put that together and also discuss with their counselor as far as different ways to, again, like I said, match that up and streamline the process. So you definitely want to be aware of that. You can go to that website and check it out. And early in the senior year is a great time to go ahead and get registered, link those two together, and then go from there. Currently, there's another application that exists called the Coalition for College Access. Uh, University of Florida, Florida State, and South Florida are all using this, and that's another way you can apply to those schools. So you can use what they call their institutional app, which is directly through their website. You could potentially use the Common App, and then this third way, which is the Coalition for College Access. Most students at Bishop Penny will use the college Common App for most of these schools, but the Coalition app is also an option, so if you want to pursue that, that's something you can check out as well. And again, that's something you can talk about with your counselor when the time comes. We would encourage you to visit the Bishop Kenny website. You can see on there there's a link to Navient as well as college-related website links. There's also a college admissions in the news section where we post different articles of interest. So we would encourage you to stay in touch with us that way. We are on Twitter as well. You can see our Twitter handle there. Um, and that's another great way to find out different information about um, college and standardized testing, all the things that we try to stay on top of throughout the course of the school year. <clears throat> our annual college readiness appointments for our juniors will be, begin tentatively on November 23rd. We are currently meeting with our wrapping up our senior meetings and our freshman meetings as well. Um, and when the time comes, we will get to start getting our juniors in. If you'd like to have an appointment early in that process, you can certainly sign up. Or if you have anything else you'd like to talk to your counselor about before then, we are certainly welcome to uh, meet with them and go through anything they have to, uh, need to discuss. And again, we'll talk about their core GPA with them, their current grades, and what their thoughts are about college majors and eventually where they'll be applying to as seniors. We appreciate you watching tonight um, on our virtual program. Again, this will be available on the website as a pre-recorded link. Um, again, we appreciate your attendance. And if you do have any questions, we encourage you to reach out to our office with anything you need throughout the course of the school year. And we look forward to having a great school year for the class of 2022. Thanks and have a great night.